Christ claimed to be God, having power over the heavens and the earth. He proved this quite literally while he was on the cross, when he made the sun go dark and the earth shake. The Gospels report in Mark 15:33 and Matthew 27:51 that, while Christ was on the cross, the sixth hour having come, darkness came over the whole land, until the ninth hour, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The historical evidence for the darkness and the shaking of the earth during the crucifixion verifies them to an absolute degree. The darkness was reported by multiple non-Christian historians and recorded in the official archives of two nations, and the shaking of the earth can even be verified by physical evidence which can be seen in the present. Non-Christian ancient historians reported this darkness, though they thought that it had been an eclipse. The non-Christian Roman historian Phlegon of Trials reported the darkness as an eclipse, and the earthquake as it affected his homeland in Asia Minor, writing, in the fourth year of the 202nd Olympiad, an eclipse of the sun happened, greater, and more excellent, than any that had happened before it. At the six-hour day turned into dark night, so that the stars were seen in the sky, and an earthquake in Bithynia toppled many buildings of the city of Nicaea. And the non-Christian historian, Thallus, reported the darkness as well. Contrary to what these historians thought it was, however, astronomical data allows us to definitively rule out an eclipse taking place at the time. According to calculations from NASA, there were five total eclipses in the world from 30 to 40 AD, the decade in which the crucifixion took place. Their paths are illustrated here. As can be seen, there were no total eclipses anywhere near the Roman world, making it impossible that the darkness they refer to was a solar eclipse. We also have records of the darkness and the shaking of the earth, being in the official archives of two nations, Rome and Osron, a kingdom which was culturally Armenian but physically located in what is today Turkey and Syria. The writer Tertullian, in his work addressed to the Roman rulers, noted that this event was recorded in the Roman archives. In the same hour the light of day was withdrawn, when the sun at the very time was in its noon blaze. Those who were not aware that this had been predicted about Christ thought it an eclipse. You yourselves have the account of this registered in your archives. We also have a letter from the king of Osron, written to the Roman emperor Tiberius transcribed from the official archives of the capital city of Osrom by the Armenian historian Cornetzi. Note that Tiberius Caesar died in 37 AD, so this is a contemporary report, written within only five years of the events. The king of Osrom wrote, During the time that they were crucifying him, the sun was darkened and the earth was moved, shaken. In the reply given by Tiberius, which was also registered in the archive of Osrom's capital city Edessa, Rather than express any sort of surprise at this, Tiberius states that it is something he had been hearing from others as well, including his own governor. Your kind letter has been read to me, and I wish that thanks should be given to you from me, though we had already heard several persons relate these facts. Pilate has officially informed us of the miracles. The letter's content allows us to establish that both monarchs were independently aware of these events. The king of Osram begins his letter to Tiberius by saying, I know that nothing is unknown to your majesty, but, as your friend, I would make you better acquainted with the facts by writing. So Osron's king, clearly, is not aware that Tiberius has already heard this. So these two attestations to the darkness, and the shaking of the earth, are independent of one another. Note the enormous significance of this, these are two contemporary sources, from the people who would have the best means and resources out of anybody in the entire world to investigate these events and both independently concluded that they were true, even though there would be no way for even the most cursory of investigations to fail to turn up the fact that the sun had not, in fact, gone out lately, and that there had not been any earthquakes. We also have physical evidence which verifies the shaking of the earth which took place during the crucifixion. Multiple geological studies of the sediment in Israel and in Asia Minor, by examining layers in the sediment and looking for those with signs of earthquake activity, have identified the earthquake allowing us to see this display of divine power with our very own eyes, still today. For instance, one analysis published in 2011 in the International Geology Review, reported that, after examining sediments from the Dead Sea, they identified an early 1st century seismic event, which has been tentatively assigned a date of 31 AD, with an accuracy of plus or minus 5 years. Similar reports can be found in a large number of other studies such as that reported in the Journal of Geophysical Research in 2001.
Even the report from Phlegon of Trials that stated the earthquake affected Bithynia, which is in what is today Turkey, is confirmed by multiple geological studies. Geologists studying the sedimentary record in this region were able to identify and date 11 seismically induced event deposits in Yenishada Lake located in the Roman province called Bithynia. Comparing those geologically identified earthquakes with the historical record, they note that one of them which they found and dated matches the 32 AD earthquake, which Phlegon reported. His report that this earthquake damaged Nicaea, also located in what is today Turkey, has also been geologically confirmed. Today the city is known as Iznik. A geological study of past earthquakes in Lake Iznik, published in the journal Tectonics, found that, quote, event deposits in the sediment cores are confidently associated to 14 historical earthquakes one of which being an earthquake which they assigned to the years 29 to 32 AD. Lastly, though many may feel inclined to dismiss the reports of the Gospels due to their Christian nature, upon reflection, we can see that their testimony bears immense weight. The darkness and earthquake were national events, which would have been seen by the entire population throughout the nation. Jerusalem and Israel were the center of the ancient Christian church. They could hardly get away with claiming something like this in the very city and nation where it did not happen, where anyone would either know themselves, or could easily learn from any single one of their elders, that such things had never been witnessed. Indeed, we can be certain that the Gospels were completed well within living memory of the events, being written at their very latest less than forty years after Jesus' crucifixion. This is because Paul quotes the Gospel of Luke. But Paul was executed by Nero, who died in 68 AD. As such, even assuming that this gospel was written in the absolute latest possible year, it still would have been written just shy of 37 years later, with the other synoptic gospels being written around the same time. This allows us to make an interesting parallel. As of the year of the publication of this video, 2023, the Challenger disaster took place 37 years ago, in 1986. If someone today were to come up to you, claiming that when the Challenger exploded in 1986, the sun went dark over the whole nation for three hours and there was a simultaneous earthquake. Disproving this would be as simple as asking your father if any such thing happened in 1986. Or perhaps you, yourself, remember that year, and could tell them, yourself, that you're certain they are wrong since no such thing took place. Yet Christianity was able to have its center in the very place where this boldest of claims about its founder would have been the easiest to disprove. So these events have verification on every level, reported by historians both Christian and non, recorded in official government archives, and preserved in physical evidence, it can be confirmed that during the single most religiously significant event in human history, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the divine itself marked the supreme significance of the events, the sun went dark, and the earth shook, as God mourned his son.